Welcome to another episode of Help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm here with Jeff R. Carey. Yeah, you nailed it. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm glad you didn't get hit by the crane today. Today a crane crashed into a building? Yeah, and then to the street, right? That's a bummer. It is. Yeah. Six, six people injured? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we start naming them? Jonathan <laughs> Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> like a graduation <laughs> <laughs> like it's titanic people <laughs> oh no i hope they're okay though <laughs> i am i i do hope I, we pray for <clears throat> you um i'm so happy you're here thanks me too you are fucking killing it thanks you're crushing it i'm having fun yeah you're fucking hilarious you're amazing thank you so you are just blowing up your videos are hilarious thanks your stand-up I, I mentioned on my stream briefly that you were coming on my podcast and everyone was super psyched. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's it's weird. I think that's like the thing I'm always like skeptical of is like I'll get like uh, like nice comments and I'm like, what are you guys messing with me right now? Like it feels like it could all fall apart at any point. You know, that's what I struggle with as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I post a video or whatever, and it doesn't do as well as the others. I'm like, this is the end. This is it. You know, there's a lot of stress involved. with Me it. too. I struggle a lot with like imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I struggle like if if I, I feel the same exact way. If someone comes up to me and it's like, hey, you're amazing. I'm like, me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like weird when from an outside perspective, no one would think that. Right. But yeah, we, there's so much imposter syndrome going mm -hmm. on at all mm -hmm. times where you can't believe it. Like just meeting even like people on the road when I travel and like when they're like excited to meet me, or, like nervous. I'm like, are, are you kidding me? I remember I did shows in Michigan with my family and my family was watching like people do like the meet and greet. And they're like, it's you. I know. I know. I don't know why they're like this either, but it's it's, you know, I'll enjoy it. You know, I was actually talking to my aunt about this yesterday and she it wasn't in the context of me. She was just talking about like celebrities that do that and she was like they do that to kind of like protect themselves from getting hurt and i was like that's uh, interesting okay I, gu I guess that makes sense what just like say like oh i don't know if i deserve all this i guess if you're like oh it's just me and then it if you don't like feel the ego that comes with it then if anything happens you don't feel as like yeah i i think you got to also put yourself in check sometimes too True. to make sure because there are times if somebody like sees me on the street and be like Jeff, and I'll, I'll I'll never assume it's like oh you do comedy I like your stuff, but I'll always be like I'm sorry do I know you like one of those things yeah, like no yeah. I just wanted to say and I'm like okay but it's rarely it's somebody I met that I forgot that I met yeah it's, it's usually somebody like oh I think I saw you on something or how do I know you and I'm like I don't know I just walk away I don't ever be like do you like TikTok <laughs> do <you> yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I love how humble you are. There's something that you said to me once. You were Dan was doing a set at um, the Fat Black Lounge. There's something you said to me that stuck in my head. I've like repeated in conversations. It was so smart, and it was like both you and I like we both found success like kind of like it's not that it happened quickly, but it goes from like zero to a hundred when it happens, yeah. right? And what you said to me is like other people find your success as a personal attack on mm -hmm. themselves, and that was like. You articulated something that I felt so well, and yeah. I felt so like seen by when you said that. Sure. Oh yeah, I had somebody <laughs> just recently says to me. Um, actually, I think it was like Renan Hirschberg said mm -hmm. it, where he goes like, "Sometimes people feel like they're you're being successful at them." Yeah. And it's like that's no, it's like you know not at all. But like, there's a lot of hate around anybody that's doing like s doing well on an avenue that they're not taking. Right. You know. But I don't really, I don't know. I also find that the nicest and the funniest people and the coolest people often do not care. Exactly. Like, people in success never criticize. No. They rarely do. Because like, all the energy you spend looking at other people, you would have been spending, like, writing or, yeah. writing or like, you know, building yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're too busy to care about well, someone else's success. You know, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's, it's. It's really cool to see what you're doing. I Thanks. love seeing all the pictures on the road of people meeting you. And yeah, it's fun. It is funny. You know, I, I had a friend that I met at the dog park, and she came to see one of my shows, and people were, like, excited to meet me, and she's like, I don't get it. It's just you. And I actually was offended <laughs> by that. I was, like, I was like, it, oh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I think you should be slightly offended by that because that – but you know what? At the same time, uh, sometimes people not outside of the, our realm don't understand what is an insult. Like – Right. I had somebody message me, and that's, I've been thinking about it. 
it was actually two days ago, mm-hmm. and it was a set. It was like middle, or like like I had three shows at the cellar. It was like my middle show at the bar or whatever. And I think I remember the guy, but I remember the set I was doing that night. It was I was starting about with dogs, and I ended with a thing about hair, uh, <laughs> specific to hair. And that was the same set I was doing all night. But I got a message that said, "Hey, I just wanted to say." Uh, really g- great watching you tonight. It's so cool to see somebody kill without doing any jokes. And I was like, I, w- I almost wanted to reply, like the smirk face, and be like, I'll take this as a compliment or something like that. Yeah. But I know the show went well. But I, and I also know that it was 90% jokes. Some of it was just like, you know what I mean, buddy? Like you know, riffing with somebody or something like that. Right. But that stuff, like, you don't know, you know? Yeah. God. Also, maybe they do know, and they're just being assholes. I think there's part of me that thinks that because it was like a guy in yeah. like a fisherman hat or like a cool guy hat or something. And I'm like, I think it might have been his way of being like, "Ooh, you know what would really yeah. stab him?" And he'll talk about it on a podcast two days later. Because <laughs> I did, it stuck with me. Like those those slight ones. Like if like I post a picture and somebody, I mean, you must get more way more weird mm-hmm. hate where it's like guys negging. Yeah, like oh, like today, like. Wow, imagine being a fat guy. You must actually have to be funny. Like, stuff like that. Uh, and it's like, shoot. there are plenty of, like, hot girls that don't have a following. It has to do with, like, being funny and, like, yeah. and everything else that comes with it. But the thing, it's, there's so many voices in your head that you have to mm-hmm. just constantly, like, swat away. Yeah. Um, I feel like the thing that I've noticed so much about you is, like, you have this, like, very like a magnetic energy on stage oh, like you're very like 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 uh, you watch you on stage you're like i want to be friends with that guy uh, thank you i think that's like a big it's such a like like you i watch your set i'm like yeah let's <laughs> let's hang out like this is fun yeah i try to keep it lighthearted. even like in moments where uh, there's mean moments like where somebody's like kind of being a jerk yeah i always have to like put myself in check to be like i still this is who I am mostly, as I'm saying, because it's hard. You can't really replicate a character, like you can't riff a character, improvise a character as much as you can written word. Mm-hmm. Like for example, like if you were somebody, uh, a comic who has jokes th- that they say very dry, and then you're off stage, you're often a little less dry than you were. Or, you know what I mean? Like your yeah. persona is not your thing. But that's pretty much who I am. Yeah. And sometimes if I do get upset with somebody in the audience, like them, like trying to be funny is my biggest pet peeve, even though that's not their job to be anything. It's just like if I just ask someone's name, they're just like. I don't think you can handle my name. And it's like, buddy, it's Gary. I can handle that, you know? But I hate, like, those types of things. And I'll sometimes catch myself being like, all right, just be like, it's a cool man. I get it. You don't want to participate. I'm done. It's all right. And then yeah. I'll move on and be like, I'll keep it lighthearted. I don't want to atta- – I hate attacking. I hate attacking com- like comedians. Yeah. Like, when it's, like, too aggressive. You know what I mean? Like, look at this shirt. Look at this stupid shirt on this guy. It's like, I paid to see you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I have to put myself in check sometimes where – Sometimes I think they're just overly excited or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's rarely like a mean person. You know? I know. It's it's um, it's funny. I so I was d- someone tagged one of my jokes in the audience like last week and I was like, you know what? Good job. Like, I like your tag. Yeah. 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 I used it uh, the first time I used it on stage. I was like, let me try it. It was bad. But I was like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. 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 I'd like I'm I'm trying to not be so so like protective sure of like i'm the only one that's allowed to say anything worthwhile yeah that always gets me that always gets me a little bit i think that no one should be able to just yell out whenever they want that's crazy to me i agree but i do also feel like the best type of comedy in my opinion is somebody who's talking but it's like it's it's like we're talking together but when i'm just talking primarily right like i don't like the whole like this is stand up it's supposed to be just jokes and that's it. It's like, cool, that's great. That's, I've loved watching shows like that before. Yeah. But I also love like a TJ Miller where you were to go, if you were to see like them on stage, you'd be like, oh, this is like an, a, a situation going on. Like the whole yeah. thing is like, it's a vibe. The show is unique to the next show. Yeah. Because it's what he's doing with that crowd. Yeah. Not specifically going up and going 19 things written in a row and doing them individually. You no, know it's what I mean? about like being present. I think that's yeah. what really makes a good stand up. Like I was. I was watching Shane Gillis in the main room. I was hosting on um, Monday at the stand. And, like, it's just, like, him as a person then plus is – like, I feel like people don't realize, like, who you are as a person is so much of your act as well. Like, he's just a very, like, likable person on top of being a great writer and, like, his delivery, you know? And I was, like – like, he was just really taking his time with things. He was just being, like – you're, like – 
you like the person. It's not just like running through a set. And 100%. I think, I don't know. I I feel like I'm feeling more passionate towards everything lately, which is it's great. Nice. Yeah. Which is good. Versus what? Did you have like uh, more of like blasé feeling toward like what? Like podcasting, like mm. stand up? I don't know. Everyone goes through like a. I don't. I don't know what I ha- what it was before, but l- lately, like every time I get on stage, I'm like, yes, I'm yeah, g- I'm glad I'm here. Oh, that was last night. Me and my yeah. sister were walking around all day. She's visiting me in town, and we walked to the uh, the Rock. Went to the Rock, top of the Rock, and mm-hmm. then we walked back. I live in East Village, so we walked back from there. Yeah, and then we walked the High Line, and then we went to the cellar for the shows. My first spot was like at nine thirty or nine something like that, and we got there, and I was like, I'm do- I'm like dead right now, dude. And so we got two double espresso shots, and it was the second <laughs> sh- I got off stage. I was like, "I'm back," and she's like, "Yeah, no." I as soon as I was watching you, and that got me excited. And now we're back to like being good. And then we like had a couple drinks, and That's we so like walked fun. home, smoked half a joint. Like it was really, really, it was a great night. But it was funny how uh, I don't even know why I got into this topic about like just that excitement of stand up when you get up there. It yeah. can sometimes just like spark you again. You yeah, know? it yeah. really like it get. I feel like it gives me life. Like it'll give me, it. Like it really does. You know what's interesting? I I feel like my first like memory of you as a person is we were at Stand Up New York, and I had this like, it's I've been working on this idea for actual years, but and I feel like I finally ha- have a joke around it now. But I was telling you, we were talking about actually this is kind of different, but I was talking about being like bullied in um, high school and like kind of writing a joke around it okay and people and like how people don't this was a joke i was workshopping a joke with you at stand of new york okay nice. and i remember i was like wow jeff's a real comic he actually like cares about jokes yeah you know a lot of comics will just like talk shit about each other but the premise of the joke now that i'm thinking about it it was that um People, when you say you're bullied, people are like, oh, you're, they were just jealous of you. And you're like, no one was jealous of you when I was, like, five. Yeah. <laughs> and you were, like, helping me, like, workshop this joke then. And I remember being like, it was really cool. That's funny. That's a funny. I don't remember that. But that's a very funny premise at the yeah. very least. It's like, it's like, they're just jealous. It's like, what, your diaper? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, rom- your six-year-old romper is just, like, all the girls are going to hate you. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love, like, I'll do that with. I'll re- very rarely be like, you got, uh, you messed it up with this. I don't want to give like unsolicited advice, but sometimes I'm like, yo, this word w- might be better at the end, not the second to last word. It should be the last word. Like, I love stuff like that. Like, yeah. alliteration. Like, like I, a, yeah. yeah, I just have a joke where I say, this poor dog. And I was like, this poor pupper. And that gets a little tiny extra laugh. Is a, that's a good word. And poor and pupper. Oh, I'm like, oh, I figured that out. And I have them in my notes. I'm like, pupper over dog. I'm like, Kendall. Like, it's, <sighs> it's like, like, I love like little adding things like that. That's what's so great about the seller is. I can do so many sets that I can do the same joke, and by the end of one night, that it's joke is changed. completely different in a good way. Or there's like two tags, and yeah. I'll even say it on stage, like if I tag it and on a riff, I'll be like, "Nice, I just thought of that. <laughs> I'm gonna use that later." <laughs> I always, I love doing that because if it, if it does happen genuinely, yeah, they're like, "All right, cool, hell like yeah, we good were for here you, for man. that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's fun. So okay, 2018, you did late night with Col- with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. So okay, what was did you what was that like for you? Nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, I didn't go into it confident because yeah. I wasn't like crazy about my jokes. I was running that set around town and it was doing okay. Mm-hmm. Like my favorite jokes were the ones were a little, were a little more blue, a little like sillier. What's blue? Like blue. Like if you go blue, it means you like go like to fart jokes and stuff like that. And really? Yeah, yeah. Why like, have I never heard blue? going blue? You never heard going blue? Like Democrat. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, I, I really like, uh, <laughs> that's why Colbert really wanted me to stay in the red, uh, no, it's, it's like going, um, like cheap humor just for the sake of laughs, like fart humor, sex humor, things like that, okay. people have called it going blue, um, you learn something every day, yeah, there you go, yeah, but that was, uh, I would, I would, the jokes I was loving doing weren't the ones that I was doing on that late night set, and it was still a great, experience but it's funny if you look back at the tape it's not who i am yeah at all i was nervous i was just doing the jokes to do them but i think the people that saw me that got me there jessica pilot and like uh at the festival i went to when i was performing those jokes at like a bar in montana 
I was doing them the way I would have done. I should have done them on late night, which was like way more loose mm-hmm. and like having fun with it and stuff. And then it was like she's like, oh, let's capsulate that and then bring it to late night. And then I got here and I probably gained like 25 or 30 pounds since she saw me because I just moved to New York and I was here for like eight months, nine months. And I was just stress eating and like yeah. living in basements and off couches and just like eating bodega sandwiches three times a day. And then we perform it and I was performing. She goes, how many times can you run this set? Uh, and I go in the next she goes in the next three weeks. And I'm like, I have, I have one show next week. I can run it. I've, I don't know anybody here. I just moved to New York like the week prior before she said you should do the late night. And so it was that was really stressful and tough. And then I remember like hot soup, like Mark Norman and Gary Vaynerchuk yeah, yeah, got yeah. me on their show when it was over on um, on the Upper East Side. OK. And it was that was so nice. Him and Joel Essie and like solid stuff, like something like that. When I got off. Helped me out a lot. Like, OK, at least it's the jokes are good jokes, yeah. you know. But I look back and I'm like. I, oh, I just did a radio show and they play, played it to intro me like they're like is that them done I did and it was just like uh, Jeff R. Curie and I was like no don't make me and I stopped <laughs> and I said, don't do not do this don't make me listen to this right now don't make me listen to my late night set from six years ago dude oh god I hated it but it's you gotta learn you move from it you know your yeah. voice changes a lot yeah. of people think their voice is like they define their voice in comedy and usually it's just like a confident version of yourself or like an amplified version of your What do you think uh, helped you find the most confident version of yourself? So I, I really love dipping in and out of a crowd to mm-hmm. make it seem like what I'm saying is a riff, but it's like something that I kind of half wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, so what it was was doing – I was doing cruise ships for a while. Yeah? Yeah. There's Good money. It's decent money. Really? Honestly, yeah. Like you can make more on cruises than you could like trying to book your own weekends if you're getting guarantees. Right. But – it can be weird, but I love it. The guy, the big warnings were like, it can get lonely. I'm like, solitude is what I call that. I love that. Yeah. You know, give me like a video, give me a Nintendo Switch and like some books. You're speaking my language. Yeah. I would read like three <laughs> chapters of a book and then I would deserve and I'd write and then I'd be like, now I get to play video games till my show. <laughs> I just uh, bought the new, I bought the new OLED. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that one. It's, it's, it's great. My problem, but before I have been playing so much that the little grip over the left joystick has worn off. Nice. Now I have a cover on it. The cover keeps coming off. It's so upsetting. I need to get like a whole new left side because I've worn it down. But yeah. anyway, yeah. What are you playing? Stardew Valley. Oh, dude. You play that? Yeah, I've gotten to like year four on that. Like mm, at some point. Yeah, uh, I'm on year five. Oh, uh, nice. Not to be competitive. I know, but I bought it on my laptop. I bought it on my phone. It's I have it on so my good. Switch. Who yeah. did you marry? I didn't get. I never got because I never did the whole getting the hearts up. You don't understand. Marrying someone, you feel like when they love you, you feel love, you know? <laughs> when they're like, Natalie, I love you. I watered your plants today. You're like. No, that's funny. Okay, yeah, yeah. That is, I never got, had somebody like move in. Oh, when they move in, if they're the right one, they make you feel special. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like a lone wolf in that game. <laughs> I get that. I got my I farm. I'm just trying to, just trying to make my grandpa feel proud of me. Oh, he's <laughs> proud. He's proud. He's proud. <laughs> that is funny. I remember starting to play that game. Be like, oh, this is gonna. I'm gonna dip some hours into this, dude. Oh, it's so good. It's I'm sorry. Good. I didn't mean to interrupt for like, ner- just just that. Like, I live and I'm living and breathing that game for some reason. That genre popped off too, by the way. There's one called like Graveyard Keeper. You can get. People on are telling you that that's really good. It is. It's in. It's like a little darker version of it. Yeah. Like where you get dead bodies and you have to like exhume them and get stuff out of it. It's like mm-hmm. a little bit darker, way more grindy, and intense. Stardew was very lighthearted. Like you wake up and you're like. The like, I'm going to feed all my animal. Are you more of a rancher or a farmer? Oh, I like the farm stuff more. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like seeing the, the vegetables grow. Yeah, the grid. And then I like the mines. I go to the mines yeah. a lot. It's fun. Uh, yeah, it's funny. It's I didn't know just, you played. Oh, God. It's to the point where, like, Dan got me, like, a painting of Stardew mm. Valley. I have, like, the crystals that my favorite town member likes. Like, it's bad. That's great. It's bad. I tried to get my sister into it. She didn't. But my niece loves it. Okay. She just doesn't know, know how to do it as well. Yeah, I'm gonna get it for her. And I told my sister, I'm like, you would fall into it pretty quick. It's you just have to like get the hang of it. The first time I tried playing, it made no sense to me, and then I had to like under, I you know, watch a few YouTube videos. Yeah, and then you also find out just how you want to do it. Yeah, you know, just w- walk around. I didn't mean to cut you off saying you were saying something way more important. No, I wasn't. I was just saying the oh the cruise oh, ship stuff. Oh, cruise ships. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that's what the question was uh, finding my style or yeah. whatever. Was so the cruise ships when I got hired, you need to have two half an hour adult shows. So performing for 18 and up Mm -hmm. and then one half an hour all age show. So like kids would be in the front row, like five, 10 year olds. Mm. And so that was an hour, an hour and a half material you'd have to have. You couldn't repeat. And I was doing that and I found that the contract was five shows. So you'd often repeat one of your adult shows and one of your 
uh, PG shows. Yeah. And so what happened was I would have, it would be fun, and then people would be like, oh, I'm going to come to the next one too. And I'm like, no, no, it's the same exact 30 minutes. But they wouldn't care. Like, no, no, that's okay. I'm going to come see it again. And I'd watch the second version of the show, like, not do as well. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to cut my adult shows in half and extrapolate. Like, when I talk about kinks or things that I've experienced, Mm -hmm. like, who else is – and so I started dipping into the audience in before and after every bit, or I'm usually before, yeah. Because then I'd have somewhere I have an exit strategy. So I start the bit if I go like, you know, I was with somebody with nipple rings recently, and then I you know, anybody have nipple rings? This is a weird example. But then like that would go on like a weird three minute riff with somebody, and then I'd be like, oh, here's the reason I brought it up. I have an exit. Right. So if it, there is a lull, I can go back to me. Having the exit is so helpful because when there really is nothing in the crowd about it, you're like. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you even say it? Yeah. Yeah. Why did you bring up nipple rings? Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the thing. That's the weird thing about like just walking around and doing what's your story. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? It's like yeah. you can keep digging. You'll find gold eventually. But man, if you do, if you have to dig deep, like three people in a row, it's kind of like the audience is like, what are That's we doing like, here? do you know what you're doing? I yeah. just had that at a club. I did a full weekend. And he was like, he thinks he goes, um, this is kind of a humble brag, but he was like, uh, I appreciate you when I, when we've had people here that have gotten popular off of social media. Um, I just appreciate you coming here and actually running an hour and not just mining my audience for five shows where you're just walking around trying to get a clip the entire time. Because like mm-hmm. I didn't even seem like you were recording, like you were just doing your hour. I go, yeah. thank you so much, man. People you know, think that it really, you know, what really bothers me though. Like I feel like on the road there is this like resentment towards people that have built a following on social media, mm-hmm. and it's like. What, you've been doing comedy, what, over 10 years? 10 Thir- years? Yeah, 13 years. Thir- like, so it's like, yeah, you built your following on social media, but you're a legitimate New York comic. You're working the comedy seller. It's kind of like, yeah, I know you built your – it's like, like, I just feel like there's this resentment towards people that built their their following off that. And I'm like, it takes a legitimate amount of work. People are, are, are following me because I'm posting stand-up clips. Yeah. And I just – the jealousy that comes from that is I appreciate you not mining my audience. Actually, it's my audience, so yeah. Well, no, that was the, the club uh, booker, it was manager. No, I know, but I'm saying it's your audience. Like, yeah. it's actually he, you're, you would be mining your own audience. It just, I know it's like a nice thing to say, but it's also like on the road. There's such like a, there's. I just feel like every person's like trying to scope out. Like, are you a real comic? Are yeah, you yeah. like a? You just have a following, and it's like, I'm a real comic. Like, fuck off. Yeah. And it's just like. The jealousy that comes even from the top is – it just disturbs me, if that makes sense. There are still some people that are successful, but I can tell they don't like me. Yeah. Or it could just be my brain. If they're not super nice to me, I assume they like they, they just like me or something. Like There's right. a lot of that, but I don't know. It's still like – I think that's going to happen always because yeah. also there is there is a basis of insecurity in, in a lot of us. So there is like a lot of like – yeah. When we get there, I do notice it takes one show or two shows. Then everybody's like really buddy buddy with me, like the, either the openers that they booked mm-hmm. or whoever it may be. Because I've had some snooty, I've had some people open up and be like kind of like mean to me. And I'm like, really? What are you doing, man? Like, yeah, I like like just like, I assume uh, I just can't speak to the crowd. And I was like, do whatever you want to do, man. Like, do whatever you want to do. And then he like would try, and it was just like aggressive and mean. And then I was <laughs> like, okay, you're just not good at that part of it. To try it if you want, but yeah. I think if people were coming to see me for a thing that I'm kind of known for doing, I wouldn't try and do your version of it yeah. a- aggressively right before me. But like, I don't know. There is some. There's some elitists, and they're usually about like two years into comedy. The ones that are like for someone actually. like you, I look at your social media. It's only clips. Yeah. Every clip has twenty to thirty thousand likes. Even if you're following from social media, it's because people love your your stand up on social media. Sure. So it's like, fuck off. Yeah, and it's like I have like over I think like an hour and a half of clips that I put up because in August or in t- uh, August nineteenth will be one year since I started posting. I had no Facebook, I had no TikTok, I had eight thousand Instagram followers. I just started. I was like, I'll just do three days a week. I have a lot of clips from the seller, and I think that having that three times a week, same time every week, posting it. I'm allowed to post mediocrity mm. to a degree because it's like at least I'm putting another thing out there that you I, you expect from me. Now, right. if I were to just do bangers, then you'd get one a week. Right. And I'd do like my favorite one and it'd be a lot less stressful for me because sometimes I get home and like 
on a Tuesday night. I'm like, I gotta do a clip for tomorrow, and I have to yeah. s- comb through and like find a little piece of something off the uh, off the hours of footage I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like I don't know. I really respect you. I think what Thanks. you're doing is fucking awesome. I appreciate it. You're gonna it. like. I truly believe you're gonna be huge. I would. I'm love not trying that. to kiss your ass in any no. way because I have nothing to gain from There's it. There's nothing to gain. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Because like you know, but I really <laughs> think like you know what? Okay. There's traffic, but this is going to be a short podcast. A few last things here. Sure. Best <laughs> advice you ever received. Could be stand-up, could not be stand-up. I was thinking about that, <coughs> excuse me, today. It was funny. I was walking with my sister, and I was like, I think of good advice. And she's like, remember this advice I gave you? I'm like, oh, it was <laughs> yours? <'cause laughs> uh, but she did, and it helps me is I, um, I compartmentalize, like, my day. I just kind of, like, uh, just I, I shouldn't even make it that complicated. I just write lists now mm-hmm. of, like, because I have ADD. So I will be like, I have to email this out to this person. Oh, but I still have to email those three people. I wonder if they're mad about me because of that clip. I should edit that clip. And then like the next thing you know, I'm doing nine things removed from the thing that I was initially trying to do. So she's like, write down every little tiny thing. Like make the list longer, mm. not shorter. Like even if it's like clean my house. No, right? Clean the bathroom, then clean the bedroom, then clean the living room. And then you can cross them off as you do them. And it gives you, like, satisfaction. And I do like, like, in video games when you have tasks and it's, like, mission complete. So I, yeah, yeah. so I just write down, I have a to-do list I always carry with me of, like, a little notebook where I write the date and I have the things I want to do that day. And I write them out. And I just, I cross them all up no matter what. And it's so much easier that way. And then the other advice was from a guy I sold a cell phone to, like, 15 years ago. Wow. It stuck with me. What did he say? I don't know what, it, it was no context. It was just like something that he said to me on the way out the door that I think of every day. He goes, do the things you need to do before the things you want to do. And that just like always stuck with me because mm. the things that I want, I'll like be playing a video game knowing I have two things that I need. Like I have to like set up my con ed or something like that, like at yeah. my apartment or something. And I'm like, wait, what am I doing? I need to do that. And it, I get that anxiety of like, I need to do that. And I then I don't do it because I get overwhelmed that I didn't do it. It's yeah. weird. So I'm like, if now that you just do it, it's often way easier than your mind makes it out to be. Right. Like your tasks that you don't want to do, you know? What is something, like, I feel like watching your stand-up, like, I don't even, I'm like, I want to know, like, something about you. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, I talk a lot about myself. In yeah. My, I feel like you, I don't know. I feel like. On my In my hour, like my full stand-up. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? Like, what about me? I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, thinking about it. I'm like. I don't like. I'm like, where? What state were you born in? Oh, Jeff? Yeah, I was born in Queens, or in Queens, and then I moved. I lived in Long Island with my family until I was like 15. Really? And yeah. then where did you go? And then my my dad had a, like a, there was a falling out with my dad and his dad for their family business that we mm-hmm. had in Queens and like Ridgewood, and so we moved to Michigan. That's where my family lives. Because my parents met on a like I my mom was on a cruise, my dad was on vacation. They met. My dad lived in New York. My mom lived in Michigan, and they were like married three months later. Like my mom just moved to New York, and so. When that all happened, my, let's like they're like, let's reset. Let's go to Michigan where my mom's family lives, and we all moved there. And now my sisters have kids there. Um, my mom, they all live close by to each other, and that freaked me out. When my second sister bought a house, I was like, I need to leave because you guys are all like living close together. You're you're starting a whole life out here, and I'm not done figuring out what I want to do yet. Right. So I left for Chicago. I was doing stand up in Michigan for two years. Then I left for Chicago. Did it there for five years, and then I came here because I was like, once you start growing and you're like getting to the top of where you are it's you have to go to the next level otherwise right. you can come real complacent so did are your parents still together yeah so they knew each other for three months then got married yeah do you replicate that in your relationships always really yeah i, t- I tell my uh i was talking to my sister i go the, the, my parents are the they, they you look at your parents and you go these are the things i don't want to do sometimes yeah and like without talking shit uh i never wanted to have a corporate job because i saw my dad bust his ass and work 60 hours a week and Mm -hmm. i barely got to see him and then not almost like nothing to show for it at the end of it you know he didn't his resume was i ran my own business so you can't really bring that to somewhere and the other thing is is uh my parents are together i wouldn't say it's like the happiest relationship i've ever seen in my life and that scares me but i also love the idea that I like jumping into something sometimes really quick. You yeah. know what I mean? Where if it's like a month in and I'm like, let's just do this, bro. Like yeah. it's not even a month. I could say like I can meet somebody and hang out with them three times. And I'm like, I enjoy the fantasy of being like, oh, this is a thing now. Just so you know. 
You yeah, know? yeah. And then like two months later, I'm like, I can't believe it. My sister talks about it all the time. She goes, write down the red flags as they happen. Stop hiding them inside and knowing that they're going to come out later because I get a lot of red flags. Why do you think you jump into things and like want all of it at once? I don't know. I don't know. You ever have like the fantasy of like you see somebody like on a subway and they're like beautiful and you kind of like picture like hey, come mm-hmm. home and say hi to her and the kids. I mean, know? I got a tattoo of Dan's name on my wrist two weeks after dating, so it's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like okay, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. You're ta- you're preaching to the choir. I'm just I'm just here like I want to hear like your. <laughs> I don't know the reasoning behind it. I yeah, probably yeah. could. I don't know. If I probably go to therapy, I probably would like figure it out right before he figured it out. I'd be like, oh, that, that's why. You know and what he'd I mean? Be like, like, no. I- <laughs> yeah, I found out. You didn't tell me. I found out. I did that. You didn't. Bye. That. Like, I think I'm a little self aware when it comes to stuff like that. But I don't know why I am that way. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like the need for the love. Yeah. You know, where it's like, I want to be, I want them to be secured in my life. I don't want to have to worry about them not liking, loving me. Mm-hmm. So I want, ooh, yeah, I don't know. Well, no, it feels like weird to be super vulnerable. Well, first, it's like it feels really good to love someone and for them to love you back. And it, it's like it's like the most amazing feeling in the world. Yeah. And then the worst feeling in the world is being the, loving someone that much, being that vulnerable and not know like oh, not knowing. that exposed yeah. feeling. Yeah. I do not like that at all. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I don't like that at all. When you feel like. Like you texted them three times, they getting it back to you yet, and you're like, it's fine, it's fine, and then your phone goes off, and you like your heart goes up, and it's just like your mom or somebody. Yeah, like, it's like Duolingo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. Kayate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, oh my god! I just wrote you a joke. Oh, the Duolingo thing. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I. What's the number of times you'll text without getting a response? I actually don't ap- – I don't follow rules really? with that. Oh, yeah. I like that. I feel like sometimes if I text multiple things, I'll be like, like I think we should go to the beach on Sunday, um, send. But also maybe um, we should save that for next week, send. Let me know what you think, send. Right. I don't like the whole – like I'm not going to like enter, 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 and then send it as one block. No, I don't no, know what no. you're supposed to do. I had a girl uh, I was dating. She was like 27-ish. And she was telling me, she goes, you got to chill with the punctuation. She's like, you got commas, you got periods, you got. Really? Yeah. And I go, I, I'm not going to apologize for that. Like, she's like, you're so like, everything is so like the period at the end of every <laughs> sentence. And I'm like, what? I think that's fine. I think if it's at the end of every sentence, but if it's one sentence, like, let's go to the beach Sunday, period. It's like, what do you want to do at the beach? Oh, OK. All right. <laughs> Should I emoji emoji? I would, or see, just I'm, nothing. I don't know. Let's go to the beach Sunday. It's like, okay, are you going to... But no period at the end of it? Just a sentence hanging loose? That's true. This is what it looks like to me. It's I don't like that like, at all. Yeah, I guess. I'll even put commas like, hey, comma, let's go to the beach Sunday. Period. That's fine. Best. Jeff. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> the bold thing at the top, the subject Kisses, line. X, 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 X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel my, my dad, he texts like that. He, hey, Nat, comma. Yeah. Excited to see you Tuesday, July. Bit like it's wild. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in between. I'm yeah, in between. That's yeah. the millennials, I guess. In between Gen Z and like the boomers is just being like I have good decent punctuation, but I can I can hang, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah, semicolons, colons, or no. I've done a couple semicolons in a text. Okay. Colons rarely I get to use, but a semicolon when I get to use it, I go, oh, it applies. <laughs> I'm always throwing it in there. You know what I mean? It applies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Rarely can you use a semicolon correctly. Do you feel like people are yelling at you when they type in capital letters? Always. Yeah. That's screaming of text. Yeah, there was one time I said, oh, yeah. I texted, like, DEAL in all caps, and then they didn't respond for a while, and I'm like, I meant it to be like, DEAL. Yeah. Not DEAL. Like, I don't know. It's the talking to, be- like, girls younger than, like, girls, like, you know, Six, five, seven, eight, Women. nine years younger than me. Yeah. Women. When it, does that shift, you know? It's like my mom hates the word boobs. Like, anything other than breasts, she can't stand. Really? Yabos? So it, it's like crazy. Yeah, it's like tits, boobs. It drives her insane. And it's like, I could not, I can't say breasts. I can't be like, hey, Dan, look at my breasts. Like, that's insane. First of all, are you having to beckon Dan? 
Look at my breasts. My dear Daniel, <laughs> I've prepared something for you. <laughs> my bosom X for your eyes. <laughs> it's a crazy word. But also the sentence, Dan, look at my tits. Is, <laughs> where's that content? True, true. Anything, I guess beckoning him in any way would you be. do something fun with him. Be like, sometimes I pretend they're like a gun and I'm like, pew. That's fun. And then he's like, ah. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's very, very funny. That's very funny. I've done I've done some silly things. It's tougher. It's tougher to be silly as a, as a naked guy. Yeah. Because you also don't want to not become sexy because the naked man in itself is so silly looking, you know? Yeah. It, dick and balls is hilarious. It is. It is. I'm, I'm not talking about like in the nice pair of underwear. That's not naked. No, We're just talking like bare. Like, just like booty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do the thing with the slap because it would hit either side and yeah. that's like a funny sound. Yeah. So I do that and I – one out of every ten girls I've dated have been like <laughs> the other feel like, What are you what are you doing right now? And but I'm the like, one out of ten, that's the one. That yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, the that's one how that that's kinda like if if I'm with someone that can like laugh over something like that, I'm like, all right, yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Cause it's like it is it's silly. Yeah, I don't date a lot. I I, I very quickly find out. I think they find out I'm a dork. Yeah. Within like a month or two. I recently went on vacation with a girl for a week. And I watched – it was a full week of watching her not like me as much. <laughs> like every day it got like where she'd be like – and I'd be like, oh, boy. You think that I'm just like like that on stage. I'm annoying. I'm like always trying to crack a stupid joke. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like – and then it would be funny to her in the beginning because there was the infatuation phase. But then she's like looking at a future with us and she's like, this is all the time, huh? Like I'm annoying. I'm, I get it. I'm a golden retriever. Yeah, I <laughs> golden retrievers are nice. Yeah, yeah, but you know, sometimes we're like, all right, buddy, get down, get down. That's the problem when people <laughs> see you on stage, or they're like, they just have an idea of you, and it's like, no, 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 I'm human. Yeah. Okay, we need to pull a tarot card. Ooh, I've yeah. never done those before. It's not. It's good. Okay. It's gonna be maybe they 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 also have been known to. Well. You have the two kings and the knife. Enjoy. It's gonna be good. I think. If it's Would like you like a, to shuffle the like cards? A, all right. It's like poker now? Do I think you stack in the deck? Can you stack a tarot deck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The shuffle is, I think, isn't it? Based, <clears throat> do you shuffle normally or just go like this? No rules. Wow. Because isn't it, don't I have to affect the deck for it to be? Yeah, put some energy in it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama say, Mama All right. I feel confident now. Oh, you want to pick a card? Oh. I'm going to let you pick the card. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? I yeah, know. I don't really do that stuff. <laughs> oh, that's not. Oh. Uh-oh. That's good. Okay. I feel There's like money involved. Okay. I, 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 Look I, it up. Yeah, I think. All right, let's see. Six of pentacles. How do you know Just pentacles? Because there's little stars on them. Oh. Aren't those oh, pentagrams? I would. Prosperity, growth, generosity. Your long-awaited fruits are ready for harvesting, Stardew, bringing more wealth than anticipated. Make sure you are generous during this bountiful time. The card can also signify generosity coming from someone else. This is the case. Accept the help with grace and put the resources to good use. Hey. That's lovely. Here's 50 bucks. Success. That's great. That's success. good. Success. Money success. That's good. That's great because I've just got a new apartment. So you I need did? I need it. I'm scared. Money. Yeah. Please. I know. The whole, when you get a new apartment, it's like the, you, you're like putting down three months rent, essentially. Yeah. First, yeah, yeah. last security. Fucking kill me. Yeah. It, it was intense. I had to hire a lawyer. I had to hire like all this stuff to help Why? me to get it. Just because I had like. This year is way better than last year. So they're all like, oh, I don't I know. know. Yeah. I, have this, I had the same thing. So, but now it's like we figured it all out. And I just moved, I just literally had my, like, some of my last furniture delivered today. Just when oh, we got, so my sisters cool. helped me decorate. I got a rug. That's fun. It's so cool. That's fun. And I, I was like, oh, I should get a gray one because my couch is gray and this is blue and my lamp. And she goes, my sister's like, two matchy match. You got to have, like, this and that. So she's helping me. I like a lot. your sister. She's the That's best. That's fun. Yeah, she's literally walking around Times Square. Can right she now. help me decorate? She would. She's great at it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I brought I'm bringing her to the cellar. I brought her last night, tonight, it's and fun. the night before. It's fun. Oh. It's really cool. I like that. All right, Jeff, where can people find you? 
Uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all that stuff. If you look up Jeff Arcuri, you'll find it. Otherwise, um, JR Curie on Instagram is where I usually respond to messages. And then I have a subreddit, too. Uh, that's actually very fun. The subreddit is R. Jeff Arcuri. Who knows when it will flip into a, you know, so mean what? one? No. <laughs> but so far, it has been awesome. Like, that's awesome. Everyone's really nice. They share, like, photos from the road and stuff. <gasps> and uh, they'll, like, if I mention a business and I make fun of it, the people will take a picture of it with them in front of it. Like, oh, this is the one he was talking about or something like that. Like, Aww, it's really cool. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Um, Please, please, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know what? Be a, be a darling. Go on Apple. And rate this with five stars and write a review. Go on Google Podcasts. I don't care if that's the uh, thing that you use. Just go on there anyway. Support the podcast. It's free. It's fun. And we love you. Thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you next week. Bye.